questions 67 and 68. So if you're wondering, where can you find graphs like this to practice with? Well, you'll find them in the new uh, Gold Standard uh, Book 2 in the Graph Analysis sections, uh, GAMSAT Math 3.5 to 3.9. That includes nomograms, and that's what questions 67 and 68 are based on, something called a nomogram, which is a type of graph that has three or more variables. And also in the book, uh, 10 full-length practice tests. In the first exam in the book, we have this graph. And this graph is taken straight out of the our Peeps book. And the graph was designed at MIT. And you can instantly notice the similarity with the graph that is in your booklet. Of course, we're going to use our graph to avoid any copyright issues. OK, so as Acer often does, if there's a graph or something that's very unusual, then they will provide you an example to get you started, to get your eyes oriented. So in this particular passage, in the last paragraph, it says, for example, and it says, if the speed is 4 meters per second, so now we're looking at a speed of 4 meters per second, and the time to complete for one circle is 11 seconds, so time to complete, and then we look for 11 seconds, and we bring this up to 4 meters per second, so we have this point here. Now they're going to get us our eyes oriented for the other things that we should be looking at. So, for example, the circular path of a soaring bird has a radius of approximately 7. So we look for the circular path where we have the uh, radius, so Acer has labeled it that way, and between 6 and 8 is 7. So now we see these curvy linear lines, and we get to understand what they're there for, and we can see them increasing. And they also say for that particular case that the angle of bank is approximately 13 degrees. So for ours, we have the angle of bank place down here and you see between 10 and 15 is this dot so now we can read it there and you can see that the dot is closer to the 15 than it is to the 10 and so to call this 13 makes perfect sense okay so for question 67 a bird two kilograms already you're gonna start thinking that this is a distractor <laughs> because we already had a passage we already have all these graphs presented to us and nowhere are we able to determine any issues with regards to mass so in all likelihood mass is something that just cancels somewhere because why isn't it anywhere <laughs> and just to be clear the M's here are not masses but that's just uh, in meters so we have the speed of the bird is 12 meters per second. So we have 12 meters per second over here. And we are told that the angle of bank is 25 degrees. So you could uh, read it up here or whatever. But you could see that 25 degrees is going to intersect 12 right here at this point. And I just wrote in here at 32. Uh, it's easier for you to read it on your graph in your ebook. But uh, we did it this way because we wanted to have some other questions based on this. But uh, of course, we're not going to get into that right now. So the point is, is that this gives us that the radius is going to be 32. And so when the question says that if the bird has the radius of the circular path, that means that the 32 is going to go down to 16 and it increases its angle of bank by 10 degrees. Well, we've been given 25 degrees as an angle. And so if it increases by 10 degrees, now we have 35 degrees. So now we're going to look for a radius of 16 with an angle of 35. So the radius of 16 is right here and the angle of 35 is right here. So you can count 35 from the angle up there or you can see that it's down here. So this is 35 degrees and a radius of 16 and now we want to see what velocity does that make and that brings us right across to 10.5 so 10.5 is going to be the velocity in meters per second and so that's question 67 and the closest number is going to be uh, 10 so that's answer choice D is correct and now question 68 a bird of mass 2.5 again you know where was the relevance we we've so far haven't seen it anywhere um, is soaring in a circular path with a radius of 10 okay so that's um, important information 
the magnitude of centripetal force acting on it is equal to the weight. Okay, so you are expected to know what weight is. Of course, you know that mass is m, but weight is mg. So your weight is your mass times gravity. And we are just being told that the centripetal force, which is given by mv squared over r, is equal to the weight. So we can equate these two. And if they're equal, that means we can cancel the mass, and that shows you that the 2 and the 2.5 uh, kilograms, all that was irrelevant because uh, mass doesn't come to play here. And then we can multiply both sides by r to get r over to the other side. Take the square root of both sides, and we have v is equal to the square root of gr. g you can take as 10 meters per second squared. Now, I have to admit, I'm a little surprised in this particular first edition of the pink booklet, Acer is not giving gravity. Normally, they would give gravity as 10 meters per second squared. So, but of course, if you've done any practice questions, you would recognize gravity as uh, 10 meters per second squared as an estimate. Of course, it's 9.81, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, 10 is a very reasonable estimate. And we were given the radius as 10. So we have 10 times 10, which is 100. And the square root of 100 is just 10. So now we have a velocity of 10 and a radius of 10. And we just have to look at the graph to see the angle. So here's the radius we get to 10. Here's the velocity, which is at 10. And so we have this intersection right here. Then we just have to look at the angle, and the angle, of course, is 45 degrees. And so for question 68, the answer is D. And you can do some more practice questions, of course, as I mentioned in HEAPS, uh, the first exam. And there's lots of nomograms also in, in the book, uh, Gold Center Book 2, GAMSAP Math 3.5 to 3.9. And you can read about circular motion in Physics 3.3.